for today. We have with us Dr. Sahiba Sethi. Uh, she is working as a cataract and glaucoma surgeon in Aronode Eye Hospital, New Delhi. Uh, Ma'am has a lot of uh, awards to her name, and she's the one who has uh, she's the one and only surgeon who has performed the mix surgery at UKSOS 22. Uh, so it's an honor to have you with us today, Ma'am. And Ma'am will be delivering her talk on eye stent in gel. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mayank. And I'm truly, truly honored with your introduction as well as the invitation to be here. Thank you, Siddharth. Thank you, Sirisha, ma'am. And uh, so I will today be talking about eye stent, which is a glaucose device without any financial disclosures to this device. So let's at the outset understand what is eye stent. It's a device uh, which is to be placed in the trabecular meshwork. It's different from the trabecular meshwork cleaving procedures that you've uh, just heard about, which includes the bang, the KDB and the GAT. So over here, we have a device which is to be placed in the trabecular meshwork so that it gets bypassed for re-establishing communication. So it's an eye-shaped stent. There are three parts of it. Parts to it. There is a head which rests in the Schlems canal. There's a thorax which will be placed in the trabecular meshwork, and a flange which faces you in the anterior chamber. The lumen is about 80 micron uh, uh, in diameter and this is where the flow happens from the anterior chamber to the Schlems canal and there are side outflow channels of 50 microns also. It's a titanium device, heparin coated, biocompatible, uh, delivered to you, sterile and this patient is also, any patient who receives eye stent is safe to undergo an MRI scan. Now two such stents, they come preloaded in an injector. Injector looks like this, you hold it at that white portion. And there's a stainless steel insertion tube which gets introduced into the anterior chamber. And when you retract uh, the tip of the sleeve with the green button over there, you see a trocar, which is a needle that's supposed to dimple the trabecular meshwork for the stent delivery, which is done by pressing on the black button. This is the uh, trocar. And also during delivery, you should be able to see the stents that you're going to deliver through this little outlet. Now, what is the mechanism by which it works? It is, like I said, a trabecular meshwork bypass procedure because, you know, that is the area of maximum resistance. And the arcs of flow through this can span at least about five to six clock hours adjacent to the area of stent placement. And by causing a Schlems canal dilatation, what it's doing is it's reestablishing the dormant collector uh, channels. This is a very fascinating study done by Alex Wang in live subjects wherein he used aqueous angiography to demonstrate how you can see before the surgery, the collector channels are very meager. After the placement of eye stent, you can see how beautifully the collector channels have reestablished their flow and opened up. So this is a short animation video on uh, the implantation technique. You make a temporal incision, preferably a very clear corneal incision to avoid the perilimbal vessels. The stainless steel insertion tube is being introduced into the anterior chamber through this. A very good on-fast view of the trabecular meshwork has to be visualized. You retract the sleeve by pulling the green button be uh, behind you. Make sure that the trocar is being pierced perpendicular to the trabecular meshwork and press the black button to deliver the stent. It's very important that the two stents be placed at least about two clock hours apart in the nasal quad quadrant. Now the second stent is being placed and you come out and that's the end of your surgery after visco uh, removal and hydration of your wound. And this is how the flow will be re-established. So this is one of my own surgeries. Over here, I've already engaged the trabecular meshwork and the trocar being perpendicular, which is a very important tip. And once you press the black button, the stent gets delivered. Blood reflux is uh, a good sign that it's in the right place. You wash it off and you'll be able to see a beautifully placed stent over there right at the level of the trabecular meshwork. This is where understanding of the angle structures also comes, comes in very handy so that you know it's in the right place. This is a second stent implantation. Now this one is uh, at least about three clock hours about, apart and this is how it looks post-operatively. So now one may wonder how such tiny stents can actually reestablish flow to an extent that you would want. So that question gets answered by this very interesting study done by Kevin Gilman et al. Now what he's done is that he's taken serial ASOCT scans, one on top of the eye stent, then uh, there are two scans uh, adjacent to it and another scan which is at the temporal limbus. What they found was that at the end of one year, 
there was a 75% increase in the Schlem's canal dilatation adjacent to the stents and also there was a 46% increase in the Schlem's canal dilatation in the opposite quadrant which is a temporal quadrant so what this means is that eye stents have been able to create a circumferential dilatation of the Schlem's canal and all this while maintaining the integrity of the trabecular meshwork as well. So where it's indicated we all know we've uh, heard enough about the place of MIGS in our surgical armamentarium but where I stand particularly will be indicated will be early glaucomas let's say ocular hypertensives preperimetric glaucomas mild to moderate open angle glaucomas it has been tried with success in secondary glaucomas also pseudo exfoliation pigmentary glaucoma so I think just to make a long story short the indications for the type of glaucoma stay the same but it's only at uh, where the stage of glaucoma is concerned, where these different devices and the choice of mixed procedures differ. So when I say eye stent is to be applied in mild to moderate glaucoma, I strictly mean the staging be done only on the basis of uh, your uh, visual field findings and not on the basis of how high the IOP is or how uh, many AGMs the patient is on. More, uh, more so also patients who are having difficulty in taking their medications and also it's very important to know the target IOP in your patient should not be more than uh, mid to high teens with an eye stent placement. And so MIX basically has five criteria that you need to, uh, that a procedure needs to meet before being called MIX. And according to me, eye stent is the most truly minimally invasive glaucoma surgery because 98% of your trabecular meshwork is left intact. All this while also avoiding any pass or endothelial cell loss. But it's contraindicated in any uh, situation where you have obstructed angles, anomalous angles, not investigated in the use of complicated cataract surgery. Like Dr. Sunita just showed how she had a PCR, but in that case, maybe KDB is probably a better idea than an eye stent because it has not been investigated in such a setting and any other form of angle closure glaucoma, neovascular glaucoma or epistelial venous pressure uh, raised. And uh, this is one of my own uh, review articles which got published earlier this year and these tables have been taken from there. So what this says is that if you combine eye stent inject with FACO, you are to see about uh, 17 to 39% drop in intraocular pressure and at least about 0 to 2 medication drop. Interestingly, in standalone eye stent cases, there was a bigger drop in eye pressure, about 35 to 48 and med uh, medication reduction of 1 to 2. I would only like to highlight this one particular study which has the longest follow-up and uh, by Hengerer at all. And recently in the ASCRS, they also um, gave away their seven-year data of these 125 patients. And they said they had consistent 40% drop in intraocular pressure and 60% drop in medication in all those patients that they started off seven years back. Moreover, you also get ocular surface improvements with any form of mix because you're taking them off medications or reducing the burden. Another interesting aspect of Isen Inject is that in spite of being an implant, it is refractively neutral. So there are no post-op surprises. It can be safely be used even with toric IOLs. This is uh, my own data of, uh, I started Isen's about two years ago and I have follow-up of the, this cohort of patients over six months. And what I see is that there is is when you combine it with FACO, of course, there is a 36% drop in intraocular pressure and a consistent 50% drop in medication. That means if your patient was on two AGMs is now down to one. If they were on one, they're down to zero. Yes, uh, it does have complications, although it has an excellent safety profile. I think the number of complications are the least with eye stent. You will most likely see intraoperative hyphema in 100% of the cases because this is a desirable endpoint. Postoperative hyphema is limited gonioscopically. There is never an anterior chamber hyphema. You can see the usual postoperative spikes, iritis, uh, inflammation, all of that. Sometimes, yes, you do also have failure to implant the second stage Stent, which is reported in literature and many a times about uh, 0.6 to 7 percent of the times eyes have also required additional glaucoma surgeries to control their IOP. So what are the newer stents that we can expect in the pipeline now? Uh, in a few months you will have eye stent inject W which is basically exactly the same as eye stent inject. The only difference is in the size of the flange. The flange is the portion which faces the anterior chamber. Why this has been made bigger is 
just to optimize tent visualization because these tents are so tiny when surgeons are placing it they're probably finding it a little difficult to see where it is if it's at the right level or not is it over implanted under implanted so by increasing the size of the flange we're making sure that the visibility is uh, superior than what it is today I stent infinite, uh, which is still not available here, but is being uh, used uh, in uh, Europe and America, got FDA approval in 2022. This is a separate device altogether for a separate category of glaucoma altogether. So uh, when I stent inject is indicated in early glaucomas, I stent infinite is indicated in severe glaucomas uh, and also glaucomas that have been refractory to medical and surgical treatments. And in this, there are three stents that, going to, that are going to be placed in one eye of a patient and it is the only device which is also approved for um, standalone implantation. So I'll just give one or two case scenarios and wrap it up. So this is a gynecologist uh, by profession who uh, happened to be diagnosed with corona induced uveitis, became a steroid responder, underwent cataract and trabeculectomy about a year back elsewhere and AGMs uh, were started within five months. The only AGM that suited her was the uh, preservative free tafluprost which unfortunately also got uh, uh, taken away from the market. She has also following that undergone temporal SLT three months so basically everything that you can think of she has undergone yet when she presented to me she had an IOP of about 39 millimeters of mercury because she couldn't tolerate any AGMs. So in this patient uh, she is uh, majorly an ocular hypertensive so good candidate of ice 10 inject which was placed and the patient now with six months follow-up is off all medications with a pressure of 19 millimeters of mercury this is another young patient who had undergone trap for an advanced glaucoma in the other eye uh, she was uh, with an IP of 29 and 5 AGMs I have a follow-up of one year of this patient and she's down to uh, IOP of 10 with only two AGMs again an early glaucoma with stable visual field still now this is another traumatic cataract wherein traumatic uh, glaucoma wherein you know that the problem over here is that there is debris on the trabecular meshwork so bypassing it makes sense now this patient had an IOP of 55 and uh, now is down to and on maximum uh, medications now is down to 15 and AGMs are also down from 5 to 4 and minus the oral uh, anti-glaucoma medications. So just like that, multiple patients have benefited from uh, eye stent provided you use them in the right context. So the last few slides would be just a few learning curve challenges that you might uh, face while performing this surgery. One is under implantation, which means that the stent has not been delivered, it's left loose. This happens uh, usually when the trocar has not been dimpled adequately so even if this happens there's nothing to fret you can just re-thread the uh, stent with the trocar and go change your location and shoot the eye stent again a trocar bias can happen which means that when you're not perpendicular to the trabecular meshwork the trocar may get shifted to the light right or left and the stent cannot get delivered so this usually happens when you have sharp angles so make sure that your hand is perpendicular to the trabecular meshwork so that the trocar is well centered and then shoot the eye stent. Another problem you can have is of over implantation. Now this happens when you dimple too much. Over dimpling uh, can be visible by corneal folds or temporarily you losing the view of the uh, angle. So when you do this, you, you know that you're uh, pressing too much, loosen your hand, relax it a bit, bit and then uh, deliver the stent. So with that, I'll wrap it up. Thank you so much for the opportunity.